Hello there and welcome to this tutorial for Libre Atom 3D. In this video we're going to be making this part here. And if you've been following along in order, you might have some kind of an intuitive approach to how you might approach designing this part. Uh, in the last few videos we've created linear extrusions using the extrude tool. So you might look at this and say, okay, you know, I'm going to make an extrusion here and then maybe an extrusion up and then I'll make a smaller one in the middle. Uh, and then I'll make a bunch of circles and extrude those down. And you certainly could approach this part that way. But in this video, we're going to show a few more tools that will make your life a whole lot easier uh, for parts that look like this. And that's because we're taking advantage of uh, symmetry. And in this case, we can see there's a few kinds of symmetry in this part. The first kind of symmetry is uh, kind of axial symmetry. So uh, everything kind of looks like it's revolved around this axis. Uh, and the second kind of symmetry that we're looking at is these holes here all kind of look like, and they are, um, you know, they're all the same distance from this axis. So when we see things like that, we immediately should start to think, how can I take advantage of this to decrease my work and to make the model easier to edit later? So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to create uh, a new kind of feature that we haven't done before called a re revolution. And the Revolve Boss tool is what we used to do this. You can see in the, in the tool tip the kind of thing that it does. It takes a sketch and then it revolves it around uh, an axis or, or a sketch figure. So in this case, our sketch is uh, this line here and we've revolved it around uh, the, the central axis, and we've re resulted in this geometry. We're then going to make a hole, and we're going to put a chamfer on it. And because, remember again, these are all the same distance from this axis, which means that we can decrease our workload. Instead of making a bunch of circles in the sketch, we're going to just take advantage of uh, a pattern. So we're going to pattern all of those. And then we're going to place our final chamfer and our final fillet. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing we want to do, like in any new part, is we're going to create a 2D sketch. So let's right click on the XY plane, activate 2D sketch. And let's start at the origin. You don't have to start at the origin, by the way, but it's a good, it's typically a good idea um, for, for many kinds of parts. So we're gonna start at the origin. We're gonna go out. Now, uh, there's two ways you can approach dimensioning and sizing things. In the past, we've kind of said, well, you know, just kind of place things and we'll dimension them later. Um, but I think we're at the point now where we can start to dimension in real time. So let's single click the origin. You'll notice this dimension changes as I move the mouse. And we know the dimension here is gonna be four inches. So we're just gonna type the number four. And as I tab out, you'll notice for lines anyway, there's, there's two dimensions here, right? The second one is the angle. So I could put, for example, 20. And now if I were to place this line, those dimensions will be placed for me. Um, so just be aware that for lines, you get two angles. You get an angle and a, and a line. Um, and for other kinds of sketch figures, you might only get one or the other. So let's, let's start. We're going to single click the center. Uh, and we're going to type in four and press enter. That's going to finish our line. We're going to go up. And we're going to go up 0.25. Press enter. We're going to go out. And in this case, we do want to define the angle. Uh, we know the side's gonna be 0.5. We're gonna tab to the other box. And this is gonna be 135, which will result in a 45 degree angle. We're gonna press enter. We're gonna go to the left. And in this case, we're less concerned about the exact number. We're gonna just start to finish it off. So we'll go up and across. So now let's go ahead and place some final dimensions here. We'll click the dimension tool, click the top line, 
And this is going to be 1. And we know the height of this is going to be 4. Now you'll notice that uh, as I dimension things and add constraints, the colors change for the sketch figures. And the color key for what those mean is down here. In this case, a black sketch is fully defined. And what that means is I can click anywhere on this sketch and I can't move anything because everything has been defined by, you know, its exact position and its size has been defined. This is the best practice. Uh, you want to get to a place where all of your sketch figures are black uh, before you make a 3D feature from them. And the reason for this is this means that you have, uh, you know, fully taken into account every possible size and positional detail of your sketch. Now, some sketches, this is less important than others, um, you know, depending on what you're doing. So if you're making something that has to fit inside something else, then it's important to take into account all those details. If you're making something artistic, maybe you're 3D printing a vase, uh, or something like that, and maybe it's less important and you're more focused on what it looks like versus what the dimensions are. Anyway, just bear in mind that as you do stuff, your colors will change and you want to get it to where it's fully black. So we've defined this and instead of using the extrude boss tool on the part modeling toolbar, we're going to use the revolve boss tool. So go ahead and click that. And we can see that now we have to select an axis. So there's two things that we could do here, right? This is basically axis really means, you know, what are we going around? Uh, so we can select either an actual axis from the default geometry, X, Y, or Z, or any other axis that we make. Uh, or we could select actually one of the sketch figures so maybe we want it to go around in this direction. So just be aware for the Revolve tools, you can pick sketch figures as well. It's one of the few tools that you can pick uh, sketch figures from. But in this case, we want to select the axis. And we want the angle to be 360, which is all the way around. And we're going to press OK. And now we see that we've made our first uh, Revolve boss at the correct a dimensional profile and all of that looks good. The next thing that we want to do is start to make some holes. And so we're going to right click on the flat face and we're going to activate 2D sketch. Now we're going to place the circle tool and we're going to single click to start and single click to end a circle. And there's two pieces of information we need to give um, to correctly define this sketch. How big is the circle and how far away from the center point is it? So let's do them one at a time. We'll click the dimension tool. We'll click the circle and we're going to say this is going to be 0.5 inches. And we know from the midpoint, which we will select, pick the dimension tool, Select the midpoint and then select the uh, midpoint of the circle. Now we can place a dimension between them. This is going to be uh, three inches. So now we've correctly positioned our sketch and we're going to go into the part modeling and we're going to use an extrude cut because we want to go straight down. Now, in this case, you know, in the previous videos, we've been kind of just saying, let's just make sure it goes past, past the geometry uh, that you're trying to cut through. And this is okay. Uh, it's, not, it's not the best practice uh, because, for example, you may have something, you know, over here that you don't want to cut through. So there's a few different approaches you can take. Um, in this case, we know there's nothing it's going to run into, so we can just leave it like this. But... What if we go back and we edit uh, this plate and we make it a whole lot thicker? Well, all of a sudden it's not going to go through anymore. So we want to place a condition that says, you know, always go through everything. And the, the way that we do that 
is by changing the type. Right now we're, we're to depth, which means go to a specific dimension. But we're going to change that to through all. And press OK. And that way it's just going to say cut everything in the model uh, along that profile. Next thing we're going to do is add a chamfer. So we're going to click the chamfer tool under geometry transform. And we're going to click this edge at the top. And we see a preview. Now we want this to be 0.15 inches. Press enter. Close. And we're going to take advantage of that second type of symmetry, which is uh, the fact that all of these holes are the same distance from the axis. So to do that, we're going to just use a circular pattern, which is also under geometry transform. We'll click that. And now we have to select the different features. So there's, there's several ways that you can do this. Uh, the first way is directly on the canvas or workspace area. Um, the first feature is available via this cylinder, which is an extrude cut, right? So we can see that's here. And then the second one is the chamfer, which we could select from the design explorer, or we could click it right on the canvas, either way. Uh, but both of these need to be picked. We're going to want a few more instances, uh, so let's maybe click it to 8 or 9. And we have to set the angle type. So uh, first let's pick the center, and that will show you what the angle does. Uh, I, could, I could, for example, pick the cylinder itself, and it's going to infer the axis, or I can pick this axis. Um, there's different methods that you can do to, uh, uh, to kind of do that. but. Uh, for now, just pick this axis, and let's show the different ways that you can set these. So I'm going to temporarily take the instances down to three so we can kind of easily see what's going on. Um, there's two angle types. There's the uh, fixed angle and then there's um, kind of an equal angle approach. So a fixed angle says, give me an exact angle between them. And if I increase this, you can see that that angle increases. We want to use, we don't want to have to calculate, you know, what that angle would be to make them all even around the circle. So we're just going to choose the equal angle approach. And it'll take care of that math for us. So let's increase the number of instances back. And you can see as I do this, it's always uh, maintaining an equal angle around them. So go ahead and press OK. And now we have uh, finished that part of the model. And we have just two things left to do. We have to add a chamfer here, and we have to add a fillet here. So this is a little bit more manufacturable. So let's add our chamfer first. We'll click the chamfer tool. We'll click an edge, and we're going to make this chamfer 0.25. And now we're going to add a fillet. So we're going to click the fillet tool. We're going to click this edge, and we'll leave it at 0.5. And there we go.